The United States prides itself as having the greatest military in the world. Whether on land, air, or sea, it is able to project its strength abroad and defend its citizens on the homeland. The closing of the 20th century saw the rise of technologies whose implications would mean a new security frontier and a potential new battleground. Though no country has perfected their technological defense, it is particularly alarming that America's defensive strategies are not up to par with the threats facing it. This is because the U.S. stands to lose more than any other country in the form of stolen trade secrets and publicly disclosed national security secrets. The consequences of such successful attacks would see the United States lose billions of dollars and put American lives at risk. The war being waged on privacy of information would see a second foreign front opened with hackers from all over the world attempting to steal, corrupt, and manipulate information in addition to the already growing threat of domestic hackers. What would happen if our electrical grid were compromised? What would happen if military briefings were read by anyone other than those cleared to do so? What if we told you that the U.S. is currently facing these scenarios and more? The reality is that such scenarios are not far flung. In fact, an examination into the state of the three-letter agencies gives us a glimpse into the world of the threats we face. The CIA, FBI, and NSA, also known as the three-letter agencies, are very mysterious in their own ways, and protecting our nation's top-secret information is among their top priorities. Working together as a group of agencies is very key when dealing with some of the most secure information. If we have a situation like before 9-11 where each agency had different information about suspected terrorists, then all of our data would not be secure. And without pulling our minds together as agencies as one nation, then there would be no point in protecting our information. Being known as one of the most secure nations in the world doesn't hold true when we allow hackers to walk right through and easily gain access to our government systems. There is so much information that needs to be protected and making sure that every last computer system, network, phone, tablet is all secure. Making sure that other countries cannot get into our networks and systems is a new way to combat world affairs. As previously stated, we may currently be in a secret war with other nations, but instead of guns and tanks, it's with a keyboard and a mouse. This is the new way of the world and the world changes. As with our government, they need to change as well. Our infrastructure is a key way our nation operates. People are constantly relying on power grids. The grids need to be protected throughout our country so other nations cannot use them to their advantage. And taking our nation's power grid offline would not only cause people to go crazy, but it would also put other people's lives in danger. For example, hospitals need power to operate, and if their power goes down, people will die. The most important thing we can do when it comes to previous attacks is learn from our mistakes. We can look at more secure options for protecting our sensitive information and confidential data. We can't be 100% secure all the time, but being sure that we protect most of our data is one of the most key things that our agencies want to do. Defense contractors that worked for the United States were targeted starting in 2003 by a group of hackers that were purportedly from China, possibly even officially state-sponsored. The People's Liberation Army has been suspected of deliberately hacking the United States before, but there has never been enough cause or concern from the United States government to warrant a significant response until now. This hack, known as Titan Rain, was reportedly able to gain access to systems of both contractors and the Defense Department. The Defense Intelligence Agency, NASA, and Lockheed Martin were suspected of being attacked and to hold classified information on operations and equipment crucial to United States national security. One example of the United States being on the offensive in this cyber war against other countries would be the Stuxnet virus. This virus was created by the United States and Israel to attack Iran's nuclear program via cyberspace. The attack was designed to make the centrifuges that separate nuclear material spin fast enough where they would break down. The virus was presented through infected USB drives and over time spread to different networks looking for specific systems that controlled the centrifuges. Stuxnet was believed to have successfully compri compromised 20% of Iran's nuclear centrifuges. However, neither United States or Israel have publicly, publicly acknowledged the attacks. While the United States does not openly admit to many cyber attacks, recent news is making it harder to deny their involvement. The United States would be extremely vulnerable and have severe handicaps in the global competition should we not join. Attacks such as Titan Rain and Stuxnet show that in order to properly protect American assets, it is important to be at the forefront of the battle. The United States has relied on a strong military to back its foreign policy. Since World War II, the United States has been investing in its military exponentially. We currently spend around 37% of the world's military expenditures. 
This aggressive policy also expands into the cyber war as several branches of the military have been assigned to the task of protecting the nation's cyber framework. Included in this list is the United States Strategic Command, which is in charge of intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance of the international cyber espionage. While it is unclear if any of these military branches have been involved in proactive attacks, there has been speculation that the United States is involved in said warfare. The presence of groups like these show that the United States has the capability and the motivation to use cyber warfare to their advantage. Without taking public blame for any of these cyber events, the U.S. can still take place in diplomatic relations in ways traditional warfare would prevent and still benefit from the positive outcomes of the attack. So we come to the question again. The United States is secretly engaged in cybernetic war with nations worldwide, ranging from threats to national security, digital infrastructure, and everyday life. Warfare capabilities have their limits and own flaws. Our growing digital infrastructure paralysis and competitive advantages intensifies the mistrust amongst our allies, enemies, and citizens. As we aim to carefully weigh the costs and risks of action against the cost of inaction, this acts as the way we reflect and strengthen our values, legitimacy, and seek international support whenever necessary and or possible. While our developing economy and high dependency on the internet, the capabilities of any nation to disrupt our entire electrical grid is greatly exposed in any given cyber warfare attack. At the same time, we possess significant capabilities in both defense and power projection in advancing technology resources. Therefore, ensuring the integration of such activities as noted earlier in support of our policymakers and national security is the core mission of the United States three-letter agencies.